Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, today is Tuesday. It's actually 20 minutes after I filmed yesterday's video because yesterday we were working on painting the flower. I finished it with you guys, put the beads in the center. I was then supposed to just finish all this, but I can't help myself. I really, really want to get into this rose at the top. So I decided that I would keep filming and get ready to play on the rose. So let's get started. I went to my box of scraps from quilts I've made in the years gone by. So these are true scraps. I was doing a lot of um, applique on top of quilts because quilts got a little bit boring for me and how many do you actually need? So I started appliqueing images on top of things. So I've got a lot of these um, burnt tones is what I call them, warm tones, because I was doing a lot of quilts that were those sorts of looks. There weren't very many brights. So I've got a little bit of, um, this is like a flannel that was part of a quilt that was trimmed down. So I thought, well, that is a handy little piece that could go with this work easily, especially these greens. So I just grabbed that out. I don't know if it'll be in the rows, but I spotted it in the bucket. I thought for sure that definitely works. I do have a bright red here and then these two as well. So now the rose. My plan is to do a combination of embroidery plus layers. Now I've never done this before so I'm hoping I can pull this off and I thought I'm going to turn the camera on and we're just going to have a go and see if we can do this. Got myself a pencil and I've got myself some um, tracing paper and in this case it's just grease proof paper that I can see my rose through. So the plan is, is to pick a petal, let's start with this guy, trace him out. Now you've probably seen all over the internet where you can buy kits that layers lots of fabrics together to create flowers and then you stitch on top of that. Um, what's the one based here in Australia? Wattle and, oh goodness me. I don't know what it's called now, but anyway, they're all over the internet where you sell kits. They're just gorgeous. So I've been admiring them for some time, always wanting to have a bit of a go at this layered fabric embroidery thing so this is my chance and I'm super excited I've wanted to get to this for about a week but I've been so caught up on that gate at the bottom of this panel that I just haven't got back to this rose I haven't even finished stitching the leaves and I'm off on another tangent but I think once I nut out the flower I'll be right and I can just finish it so what the plan is is I've traced the petal that I want to enhance with fabric I'm going to put a little X on it in case it gets turned upside down because we need that template cut out um, and placed in the right direction. I think I'll use this guy. I like this red. So it's just a case of I'm now going to cut it out. And the fact that it's slightly bigger than the traced element is not a bad thing because then I know it will definitely cover the grey lines of the actual embroidery piece underneath. But I do need to make sure I keep all of the bumps and lumps of the petal because we sort of want to make sure it looks like our rose. That's the theory anyway. Let's give it a go. What could go wrong? Nothing. It's slow stitch. It's layers of fabric with stitches on top. I think we'll be fine. And if all else fails, add beads. A bit of shimmer takes the eye away from what you've actually done below. <laughs> That's my theory. Okay, so the X was on top, so I know that that is the right shape. And there is our petal. That's gonna work. I love it. So, 
might do this guy. Let's I'm just not sure what I'm going to do through here. It gets quite messy. So I might just make sure I get these guys in place first. Put a little X so I know that that's the top or the, the right side. My pencil hardly gave me a line there. I'm thinking my next step would be to just pop some invisible stitches in. Is that right? Yep. So do we do a different colored fabric? What's this guy? Have I got enough of a contrast in these roses? Do I need a pile of fabric? I think I'll do a different fabric, but I will. What am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. That's just one thing at a time, Corinne. My head's just spinning with ideas here. So I'm just trimming off this guy. So here's my base. And I'd really love to get then another layer of petal colour in there. Or do I leave it simple? How's this going? What did I do wrong there? How did I cut that? Did I got it in the wrong way? That's what it is. Just need to trim that. It's got a bit of a sharp. Okay, petal number two. Where's my woolen mat? I need to stab down into this rid of those up here. I could probably use those templates again instead of let me just get this underneath. Okay. Maybe zoom in a little bit for you guys. Let's he's sitting really well but this fabric's curled a little bit and it's annoying me so we'll just pin him down. So we know that he's sitting right. Okay. Now. There's one big petal through here. Then a little curly one in the centre. And then there's an underlying one. I think I might do the underlying one. And maybe use this dark fabric. Have I got enough contrast? Well, give it a go. I'm going to trace that again. I think my paper is waxy one side. Oh no. Oh yeah. What am I? Yeah. So that's this underlying little dark piece. I'm going to trim him out. And I'm going to make the bottom of him just a little bit bigger. Is this dark enough? I don't think it is. I think that's a bit fresh. So it's going in, in there. Oh, goodness me. I've lost my design element there. Let's get a pen. That pencil's not doing me any favours. Let's try that again, guys. You are literally flying by the seat of your pants with me here. A little bit extra. 
inside so it can tuck in under. And once I cut it, it'll be, oh, that's better. It helps if you can see your lines. Why make it so hard on myself by having lines that I can't see? I'm sure there's better ways of doing this, but you know how it is. You just fly by the seat of your pants. And I think you realize by now that my videos are pretty much, you're seeing it as I nut it out. Mistakes and all, genius and all. It's just going for it. Now, I'm looking across to my bucket of trips here and there's a real dark fabric here that I just spotted. I'm gonna use that. See, it's got a, it's like a batiki. I'm gonna use that. I think that is going to show that that's the under part of the petal really well, because it's pretty dark in under there. So let's have a go at this. Just trimming around, trying to keep the shape the best I can because I haven't pinned it. You want it rough looking, you want it textured and... There we go, that's going to work a treat. So now I'm just going to take it down in size a little bit. Because it's a bit too big, but it's going to work I think. So I can trim now this off a little bit more and get that a bit more precise. Now I'm not going to add um, art glitter glue to these pieces, I don't think, because I want them to look fibrous. And that's that petal under there. So then technically, we should be able to bring the next petal. Let's move him out of the way for a little bit. I'm going to attempt to do this guy next. This big petal. So it needs to come out over that guy. We're redesigning the flower a little bit here, but that's all right. No one will ever know. You guys won't tell anyone. I'm going to come out over that petal. So I'm trying to work from the back of the flower forward. In my head, that seems like a logical way to do it. As we piece together this, well, it's really an applique, isn't it? Except with less rules. Like needle turn applique is so precise, it gives a nice sharp edge. This is all about making it messy and bringing in that slow stitch element that so many of these artists use in these books that I've got here. I know um, there's a book with a heap of birds in it. I think it's Mandy Patui. She, I think that's I think that's the one where she's got a bird that she layers fabrics in. And I've never been in a position to do a bird like that because my work has been too structured for that free form stitching. But I think I can work it into this one a little bit. And this rose is sort of the start of that. So that will go there and that will just tuck in under these petals and then this little guy will sit in there okay now to choose the color for that petal to me that's got to be a little bit brighter because it's sort of sitting forward and I think this guy might be the one so let's get ourselves a scrap off of the end here. It's got feathers on it, so it's going to give the impression that there is a bit of a petally 
shape there. Or am I overthinking all this? I should have ironed them. I was in too much of a rush to, to play. Isn't that the way? You get an idea and you just race to your room. Well, that's me. Bullet a gate. Might pop a pin in that just to stop it wriggling. I'm hoping this is a fresh enough red to look different from the other two petals on the other side. It's a little bit off camera, but I don't think you need to really see me cutting. I'm being quite precise on this one where the uh, that dark petal I did I stayed away from the edge a little bit because I just didn't know if I ne would need more petal and then trimmed it back when I was happy with the way it sort of sat this one I'm being a little bit more precise to the template but it might need a bit of a trim back it might be not look right if it's not the right size Now this evening, I've got Mary Ann coming to visit my best mate who is doing the Journal of Stitchery as well for the first time. She hasn't embroidered since she was a little girl, so she's pretty nervous about it, but she is doing quite well and I haven't seen her work for a couple weeks. So she's coming over to sit at the end of the craft table. So I will grab her work tonight and Get some shots of it. I'm just going to move that little petal so that you guys can see. And I wanted to get this piece started in the way of laying it down so that I could work on it tonight. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Oh, that flower. How lush is that? Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see the layers happening. Now we got one petal left to do. Now that petal I think needs to be fairly bright or a completely different fabric. Otherwise, it is just not gonna hold its own. It's gonna look like a big blob in there. So you've got a couple choices. We could probably track down a pale red pinky tone or we do a completely different fabric. I think this is the piece that is going to make or break it. <clears throat> I think if anything's going to convince the eye that we've pulled this off, it's the dark one at the bottom here, which I think we've got. We've got that tone happening. And this little guy, he's the, the pop of light. He's the one that's going to convince our brains that we are looking at an actual rose. So let's get our template and that's going to sit in there like so. Now, do we do something crazy like a check? Don't mind that. Or do we find, I'm just ratting around in my box of tricks here, do I find a paler colour? That's not bad. Or do I get more of a pink? Oh, I don't know. I think that's too similar, that pink. I think it'd be too blendy blendy, but we'll hold on to it. I like the idea of this. I just was looking, because I've been so focused on the petals. See how there's two two petals tucked in here they're going to be interesting do they go dark do they go light do i do those in that do i do the tartan in there is there a third do i bring that in no 
I think I'm going to use this. And the fact that this drifts between this orange and the pink may be a bit of a blessing. The other thing is this one here gets light as well. So there's an opportunity to bring that in. But I did want to be brave and play with the tartan or the check. It's not a tartan. I'm going to cut out the tartan and I'm just going to put it in position and see what I think. Maybe the tartan is another petal laying on top of something. I don't know. It's not a tartan. Stop calling it a tartan. It's a check. It's a plaid. I don't even think it's a plaid. It's a check. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's a petal. That's what it is. Okay, so there's my petal laying in there. Oh, I do like that. Oh, I do like that. Oh. And then maybe I do this as the, the throat. Do I try some others? No. I like that, guys. I don't know why. It doesn't make sense. But I do like it. Let's get that tracing paper, the skerrick that's left. And let's just take out this little guy and let's get these two happening. How fun is this? Who would have thought an old embroidery that no one ever did and was sitting at an op shop could become a fantastic foundation to this style of work. I have a feeling we're going to get a bird prompt in amongst all this. So imagine what we could do with birds and feathers. and So that's that piece. Now let's just sketch this little guy as well. That second little petal. I think I'll do one fairly dark and one fairly light. Otherwise, I don't think my eye will pick up that there's a transition there. So let's let's do the little guy as the darker one. Let's pinch him out down here because he's deeper in the folds of the. If this orangey red doesn't look right, we might sneak back to that burgundy looking red. It's probably a little bit big, but we can always trim it down. Yeah, I like that. That's pale. Let's put that in there quite got the shape right it sort of swishes over like that let's pin him so once again we're working the petals at the rear coming forward so this guy we want to be a little lighter so let's trim him out of here going the right way yep I do need to get the glue out and make it sit well. Am I going to be happy with it flipping around and fraying and looking messy? Will I lose the integrity of the roses by not having it uniformed? I don't know. Is that enough of a contrast? I don't think it is. To me, that looks the same. Nope, I don't like that. 
<clears throat> I need it darker. So maybe I do need to sneak into this and nibble off this little bit. Here. Maybe I should have this as the first petal and Am I overthinking this? Probably. Mm, I like that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Technically it probably should be the one behind, but I actually like it. Don't know why. So I think it breaks a few rules, but let's put the tartan in then as our little feature petal. Sneaking in over the top of all of that. Making sure the tartan covers everything below so it looks like it's meant to be folding out over the top. That red one there, he will need to move a little bit out because I can see the grey of the original embroidery coming through. It means I keep saying the tartan, it's a check. Please don't be offended any of my Scottish viewers. I like to think I know the difference, but I'm so caught up in petals that I don't even know what I'm saying. Let's get that pinned. That pinned there. Love it. Yeah, oh, I love it. So what the plan is then is deciding whether we need another layer of fibres and fabrics to come in on those petals. But I think what I need to do first is just get this stitched down because maybe then I can start being free form and bring in things like that to create another petal. But before I do, I've got to get this base down. And then the rest will be done with thread or I might bring in some additional little pops of color. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Mm. I'm happy with that. And I think I will add glue because I can feel in my fingers that the these little fibers are starting to break away on these little snippets that I've cut out. So I'm going to just put my little templates up here and I'm going to deconstruct this can I get him out without, yep, I can. So this little guy will be first. I'm just going to put a little bit of this art glitter glue around. It'll serve the purpose of keeping the fabric from fraying. It'll help attach it to the background ever so slightly. And then when I stitch, if I don't actually go around the edge anywhere or, you know, I, I know that my fabrics are secure and they're not going anywhere. Just for peace of mind, I think, I think I'm doing the right thing. Now let's get rid of the little check. He can come off because he's sort of the last piece. Let's... Let's just do this little guy next. The glue. Let's 
So this video, so that we sort of get to see the whole process in one video, I'm going to probably stop it now, put it on pause. I'm going to do some stitching on this. And by then, because that'll be this evening when Mary Ann gets here, I'll then grab her piece and film a bit of that so that you can see how she's going. We can do this big guy next. So we're at 30 minutes, that's great. So we've still got a good half an hour to come back and carry on. So I will do some stitching tonight with Mary Ann on this rose. I will then turn on the camera, grab some footage of Mary Ann's piece. And then probably another section of video of this one carrying on of where I'm at with it all. Now I could have cut all this out on fusible iron-on webbing. You know, the paper you draw, cut it out, use the iron to attach it to the fabric and then cut out again and then iron the piece onto your fabric. But I don't know, I'm, I did so much of that in the old days that I'm sort of over that. I'm sort of looking for more free form work and not as structured as using that style of yeah, I love that. Now we need to do these two. I'm just thinking about my color tone there. Am I happy that I've got the paler petal at the rear? I think I am because it seems to break up the eye a little bit. Like I said, it is breaking some of the rules, but I do like it. So we're going to do it. We're going to put that little guy there. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'm going to lift that and I'll bring him forward by putting this little guy in behind. There we go. Easy fix. So technically it's better because of the color and the way light bounces around. Just a few little dobs of glue on the edges. And I'm going to put this guy down first. And then that guy. There we go. And that helps. And then we got this guy coming over it all. Like so. And then the rest will be stitched with thread. So I'm gonna to have to go looking for some real burgundy threads. I haven't really got those out. I've sort of been focusing on the pinks and the greens. But this rose is turning into quite a, a red rose. A bit too much glue, so I'm just taking a little off with my fingers. And down into position. He goes. Beautiful. Oh, I love that. The safe choice would have been to um, you know, do a different piece of fabric there that wasn't so random but I really like it I really like it I just feel like I need a little petal in here that uh, see this little guy here really needs to be under there but there's not enough contrast so that's bugging me a little bit <clears throat> so how can we fix that Maybe we get a pile of fabric. We're free forming here now. We're going to cut 
just a little bit of this guy out. I just feel like we need to distinguish something in there. Yep, that's going to do it. I just feel like those two, that there is blended together too much. So I just want to pop this guy in there just to break the eye up. <clears throat> Trimming it down a little bit more. Yeah, that's better. Is it the right shape? Not yet. It needs to be more wishy. Yep. So there you go. We've added an additional petal now. So this is where the layering comes in. This is where it gets quite interesting. <clears throat> I just want to lift that edge of that check and just squeeze it in underneath so it looks like it's behind the petal that the check is folding out. That's good. Love it. It's subtle, but it, it certainly helps. Probably doesn't show as much on the screen, but I think that's I think that's a necessity. So now I can start painting with thread on top of this. Bits everywhere. There's my rose starting to come along. All right, guys, I'm going to stop the video. I need to find some threads. Oh, those beads are coming in there somewhere. Actually, my threads are just here. Do I have anything dark enough to get me started? Mm, I do. <clears throat> that guy, definitely. But then I need some light. It might be a bit pink. Do I go real red? Might need a little bit of that too. So I'll grab him out. Maybe that's, see that's very same same. You've got to be a bit careful. Probably like that better, but we're gonna need to get brighter, but I think that's not too bad. We've got that guy, that guy, and that guy. See, there's enough of a contrast that our eye will see that we've changed colour. We could even look at bringing in that guy just to really make the rose come alive and do some stitches sort of in amongst all these petals. But we'll soon see. And then we pop some beads in there and then to really help with light, we might even add some of those beads. All right, I'm gonna stop the video here. We're 40 minutes in, and then I'll come back and show you sort of how the next stage developed, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, see you in a guys, moment. I'm back. Okay, I just wanted to show you what has happened here. I've gone along the edge of the check with a little stitch in the cream that I used elsewhere on this project, the, um, the soft, soft cream. Then I popped a little couple little beads there and then I felt like it just needed even more texture. I'm really going to town on this particular petal because it's so different to the rest of the piece. So I really want to exaggerate it some more. So I was looking at this lace here, bring it into shot, and I snipped off the edge of it. See how it's got that little fringy edge? So I've snipped that off and I've got it just standing here at the moment and I'm just working my way along stitching it down on top of it all and catching a bead as well and i just i'm loving how it's defining the edge of our petal with the check which is technically the light petal the where the the light is bouncing off of that petal and we're really decorating that top edge and I'm adding depth 
in the way I mean physical depth because I'm building up the edge of it so it looks like those those orangey toned petals this guy in behind is even deeper because I've got this lace stitches and beads sitting on the edge of the check petal does that make sense I just felt like I could really exaggerate that petal with this texture So only about 10 minutes has gone since we filmed the first section. So I thought I'll just keep playing and then I'm like, oh, I like this. I better show you what I'm doing. So I thought I'd just turn it on. This video session might just turn into more and more in length because there's so much work I can do in this. So I have a feeling that part two will pop up of this. And Mary Ann, well, she hasn't got here for dinner yet, and I've gone off on this tangent with this. So who knows how it'll all unfold. Now I've got to work out where we're going to take, I've lost my needle, where are we are going to take this? Do we follow the edge of the petal? Yeah, because then that makes this red guy look like he's further away. Yeah, I'm loving it. So it's using little snippets of lace and some beads to build up ledges of height on our piece. Now, I don't know if you can see, let me just get rid of those little morsels and zoom right in. Now, I've also layered in on this petal using this red thread some stitches as well oh, i yeah, love 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 this it's really given that petal something i'm just going to get the lace stitch down because i don't want it to disintegrate because i have really chopped into it so I want to get it stitched and I'll go through and put many, many, many stitches on it because I just don't want it to fall apart because it literally now, because I've chopped at it, it is lots of little fibers. So I'm going to need quite a few little invisible stitches around, especially this end of it here because it's just going to disintegrate otherwise. So let's get that secure. And now I can pick up a couple more beads. So you can see the red stitches in there. Like if you can see, I'll get the light from the window to reflect, see them there. And they're also through here. And I pop some of the pale pink in here to start working those. So unless I can find a thread that is a really dark red, I don't think I'll do any stitching on him. I'll leave him be, but I will try and find a, a tangerine red to do some stitching on that petal there. But I'll, I'll probably avoid that one at the back because the last thing I want to do is find a thread that is not quite dark enough and it's actually lighter and it's going to throw the perspective of light completely out. So I'm better off just staying away from that petal unless I can get a really, really dark red like that red in there and I don't think I have a thread that dark so I'm gonna just avoid avoid that little guy he is I should be able to find something for there but I need to be very careful because like I said the last thing you want to do is bring in a, a new color which is lighter than everything else. Therefore, now that petal looks like it's in the foreground. And I think by doing this little lace cluster on the top edge of this turned check petal is really going to help convince the eye that that petal is swinging out into the light, into the foreground. <clears throat> 
Okay, I'll just put one more bead there. All right, then I might pause the video. I've got to keep an eye on the time, otherwise I won't get enough shown to you of where I'm going with all this. And I might go looking for a dark red next. All right, I shall pause the video. I'll just bring that up so you can see I've got stitching here, 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 and I've worked that edge of that turned out petal. It's going to be a very abstract, interesting rose. It's coming along nicely. All right, guys, I better stop the video. All right, see you in a moment. I'm back. I'm just giving you a different perspective of this piece. I've laid it down on the carpet and I just wanted to give you the whole view and where I'm sort of heading with it. And I think, I'm, I think I'm heading in the right direction. I'll just, um, it's gonna be a bit wobbly because I'm standing above it. So we've got our gate down the bottom here as it's heading up to the house at the top of the hill. So I just had a couple of people ask me what the overall view is and it's really difficult to give you that sitting at my desk with the iPad in a um, uh, an arm holding it. So just a few moments there so you can sort of get the, the, um, the full view of the project. Now I'm gonna walk towards the house and lower down over that um, rose. I've finished stitching the main rose, so I just wanted to show you that. And then I will um, leave you in peace and um, you get back to your stitching. All right, guys, coming in. So I hope my feet don't appear in the video and that'd be a little bit gross. I'm just kneeling down, coming down. Okay, there's the rose. I might end up giving you a better view when I get back to my craft room because it, this room's a little bit dark so you can't see a lot of the detail there. So that's it finished. So I'll just, yeah, it's a little bit dark. I'm going to stop the video and jump on to my desk and then show you what I did to the rose. All right, guys. Oh, look how wobbly that is. Okay, Bye. guys, I'm back in my craft room. The light's a lot better here. I'll zoom in as close as I can then I'll actually bring the piece up to the camera as well because that's pretty dark in there. But um, I think you'll be able to see enough to see what I was up to. Um, before we do that, the leaves are all finished. They have been stitched and they have been beaded. So that's done. There's a little bit of stem here that I'm yet to do and a little bit of stem there, but that'll happen. And as for these last three roses, I'm still thinking about them. I'm thinking of doing them a little bit differently to this guy, but we'll see. The main flower, let's now zoom you in and I'll show you him finished. Well, I think he's finished. I sort of got a few other little ideas and I'll just show you what I've done so far. I'm pretty sure he's finished. I'm 99% sure he's finished. I'm gonna bring him up to the camera now. So you can see I laid in heaps of stitches. Now I've left that one side open because I want to show the skeletal design of the rows of where it all started. I could close that in and it'd look great, but I sort of think I wanna see the process, if that makes sense. Something else I did that I've never done before is as I was doing all these stab stitches here, I did the one color of the red, then I found a pinky red, and I started placing some lazy daisy stitches further out on the leaf, and I was really happy with the way that came up, and I did it on that side as well. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna call the rose finished. I'm really happy with the way these little stitches sat in under here, just added a little bit more depth to it. In the center there are some French knots and then some little red beads, some red embroidery cotton coming in under the pinks and the mauves, like there's such a, a mishmash of colors there. Different stitches in different ways, different uh, outlining things and then stitching within things. Like these projects are such a great way to play with stitches really happy with the way that came up just adds a little detail and then the whole picture sort of comes together as this this flower is it a rose still yeah that's a debate I think it's more like um, a magnolia now to be honest but that doesn't matter it was just a great way to have a, a play and a stitch 
I had leftover thread, so I started doing some work up here. What I did was just did canvas stitch, lots and lots, let me bring it over to the shot. I did lots and lots of running stitch, and then I had some pieces left. So I just went straight across in one big stitch. Then I came back through and did a little stitch over that big stitch, just to hold it down. So the plan is up in this corner will be a collage. Let me zoom out. So you get a bit of a holistic view of it all. What I plan to do in this corner is um, layer in lots of fabrics and crocheted elements and build up a bit of a collage cluster around this corner and the rows will nestle into it. But that's another day, another, another day. So that's the plan up there. I've got a bit of a bit of an idea of where I'm heading now with that top edge. And as you saw on the carpet video, I hope it wasn't too wobbly for you. It tends to give me a little bit of motion sickness when I see videos like that. So I do apologize in advance, but I think it gives you a bit of an idea of where this piece is heading. Now, something the girls mentioned in their Wednesday video was that birds, butterflies, and um, um, bees, insects, you know, things like that aren't going to be part of the prompt. So what I'm thinking now is I'm going to place the peacock next. I really want to get him in a position where I know he's going to be and iron him on. And I'm just dying to try that iron on transfer. It may be too old to work because it's come out of a cupboard deep, deep in... Um, my mum's house so I, I just don't know and I have a feeling she probably inherited it too from her grandmother so it may not work but at least we're going to give it a go so anyway uh, that's where I'm heading I do need to do some uh, more stitching in here I haven't finished the little rows that we did in the last video down here but that's pretty quick I'll get that done uh, probably this evening the other thing is I caught up with Mary Ann, my mate, who's joining us for the first time in the Journal of Stitchery Project. And at the end of this video is some photos of Mary Ann's piece. So all very exciting. She's doing very well, considering it's her first attempt at um, slow stitch and embroidery and all things that come with it. She's attempted a jacaranda tree. And for those of you who don't know the tree, it's um, pretty common here in southeast Queensland and, you know, all over Australia, really. It is a massive shade tree, beautiful, beautiful tree, but she turns into a mass of purple colours, purple flowers, and then all those flowers fall to the ground. So you have a carpet of purple that appears under them, underneath those trees. So you either love them or you loathe them. They're one of those trees that you either can embrace that mess of purple and it is stunning, but do you really want it in your backyard? Some of our towns in this state have them all through the uh, streets. So when their town goes into jacaranda mode, it is just something to be seen. So Mary Ann has added our classic jacaranda tree to her stitchery and bless her, she has done French knots thousands of French knots. You'll see what I mean when you see it. My goodness, for her to tackle something like that to start with is, oh, hats off to you, Marianne. So a lot, a lot, a lot of work in that. She's also built in a little beehive. You'll see that in there, that a little structure. So we went hunting through my room to try and find a small button or a solution to have a little opening for the bees to get in and out of and we just couldn't find the right thing. We looked at sequins, we looked at buttons, we discussed a French knot or a colonial knot, just so something a bit bigger. Then we were looking at, um, um, what was the other idea we we're gonna do? Cut out a little circle of fabric and stitch that in and then pop a knot on that. It's just about getting that right proportion. So stay tuned on the opening for the bees to get into. And I hope you'll see in the photo, she's actually stitched little bees floating around the top of it in amongst the flowers. Oh, just melt your heart stuff. So good, she's done a fantastic job. So I um, was pretty impressed. So she was very modest, but yeah, she needs to give herself a pat on the back because it was awesome. So I'll pop the photos at the end so you'll see that. 
All right, guys, I think that's it. I'm not sure if the next video will be more work on this. Who knows? I'm um, not sure where I am with the days and where this video is going to pop up. But um, it'll all depend on where it lays in the week. Maybe we'll be then heading into the next prompt. I'm not sure. But um, I know that Peacock has to, has to happen very, very, very soon. So I can get him at least positioned. And um, knowing the next prompt too will sort of give me a bit of an idea of, you know, where maybe these prompts are going. And now that we know that we can carry on with birds, butterflies, things like that. I'm thinking a dragonfly. I've just finished watching Sonia Steptoe's video and she's working on some stump work. That's where you make a three-dimensional element out of stitch, fabric and wire, like a wing, and then add it to something. So stump work's just, oh, I've never tried that. And I was watching that video. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, maybe I need to try that too. These pieces are fantastic for trying random old school embroidery techniques and bringing them into these collages of, of work that Rachel and Sarah have um, blessed us with. It's just fantastic. So I'm off to probably research stump work and see if I can bring in some stump work to one of the others. It won't be on this one, I don't think. I think I might use it on the the um the the real ones where i've only got small spaces so therefore my piece would need to be small so i think maybe a dragonfly with some three-dimensional wired wings might be on my horizon who knows at the moment my head's spinning after watching sonia's video sonia is just old school teacher of techniques so head over there show us some love and just have a look through some of her videos she gives you snippets of techniques through everything and she's hilarious to watch she's just such a gem national treasure Sonia you're a national treasure all right guys I will stop rambling on because I really want to get on to watching some stump work videos and maybe find a dragonfly image somewhere or pick up a sketchbook I don't know anyway I will leave you in peace and enjoy having a look at Marianne's work bye guys